Welcome back, everybody. I'm Damon Hatfield, and now we're playing Divinity Original Sin on PlayStation 4. David and Sven from Larian Studios here are playing. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank right. you. Uh, let's jump right into it, but maybe give us a little overview of what Divinity Original Sin is. Okay. So this is Divinity Original Sin, the Enhanced Edition. It's the follow-up to uh, Divinity Original Sin, which mm -hmm. was released last year. It's coming out to PlayStation 4, Xbox One uh, in fall. And uh, I'll give you a quick demo of everything yeah. that's new. Let's play. All right, okay. So I'll start by demonstrating, because obviously the first thing that's new is you can play with the controller, and mm -hmm. this was one of the big challenges. So I'll start by de demonstrating a little bit of el elemental interactions. So I'm going to ignite the poison over here, mm. and now I'm going to cast a uh, midnight oil spell, which is going to connect both uh, the fire over here with that. Then I'm going to douse the fire by casting a rain on top of it. So let's do that. And then obviously uh, what I can do with water is I can electrify it. So if I'm going to take my uh, electricity sp skill here, that's electrifying the water. And then finally what I can do is I can uh, ice it by casting an ice bolt at it. All right, and then obviously if you walk over ice, then you are going <laughs> to fall down on your ass. So obviously all of these element uh, interactions are uh, things that you can use in combat. It was one of the things that was uh, really cool about the original Sin. So let's go and see what combat looks like. So we're going to head over, uh, head over to the north here. And we're going to be encountering a bunch of uh, earth elementals and angry plants. So one of the other things that's new is the fact that I can actually rotate my camera 360 degrees. So the original game only had a locked camera 45 degrees. So we redid all of the assets. And uh, that allows you to look behind the corner. And we actually took advantage of that as we redesigned uh, the level. So these guys are buffing themselves. On the top of the screen, you see the turn order, so in which uh, currently, uh, it's the Earth Elemental's turn. They uh, hasted themselves, raged themselves, and blessed the others. And uh, currently, it's the turn of my Rogue. Mm. Uh, so my Rogue, I'm going to uh, fast track him. Fast tracking allows him to get allows him to get extra action points in the next turn. At the bottom of the screen, you can see my action points. As I move forward, it's going to require me to use action points. And each skill that I do also has an action point cost. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to maybe uh, backstab this guy. So you have this little backstab area here. And when he walks in there, he'll be able to uh, do double damage to the Earth Elemental. So if you zoom in to the guy, you also see that he's wielding two daggers. Dual wielding is another thing that is new. Hmm. And uh, another thing that is new is that uh, these two daggers are legendary weapons. So we revamped the entire loot system uh, for uh, having lots of extra boosts, actually, as we progress through the game. So let me uh, well let me attack him. I was going to do something special. So you see, I do quite a lot of damage on him. And now I'm going to end my turn, and um, it's going to be the turn of my uh, ranger. So this is uh, Bear Daughter. She's my ranger. She's going to use a master skill, which is called Rain of Arrows. We mm. revamped the entire skill system. We introduced uh, a thing called master skills, which you get in the late game, mid to uh, late game. They're very powerful. And they allow you to do uh, lots of damage to your enemies when need also lots of control uh, skills. Now, uh, these guys, they are bleeding poison. So if I inspect them, which is also something new, I can see that their poison resistance is 150%. This means that they're actually going to be healing as they're standing in that poison. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to do something about that. But since we know that if I cast fire on uh, poison, it's going to explode, I'm going to try to put some fire in there. Now, this is my uh, fire mage, actually. Uh, but she's going to inspect first this earth elementals, which is too close to her. And we see that it has a weakness to air. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to, well, actually, I'm going to try to stun it. Let's see what happens. All right. My stun mm -hmm. uh, did quite some damage to the earth elemental, so I don't have to worry a little bit uh, too much about it. I still have one action point left. Action points carry over if you end your turn. So I, I will be able to do more things in the next turn. All right. So they are attacking my uh, rogue, but he's immune to poison because he's used to work with poison. And so I don't really worry about that. That's also the reason why I, I brought him forward. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, use a, a barrage skill. Um, let's do it on this one. Let's see what happens. I almost killed him there. And I have two action points left. I'm going to leave them to the next turn. So he's missing me. He's missing me again, which is good. And uh, my master skill is ready. So I will uh, cast a meteor shower now at those plants, and that should take care pretty much of all of them. There we go. So we have uh, poison explosions uh, that, uh, that erupt as a result of the poison being ignited. So we still have this earth elemental over here, but we should be able to take care of him 
uh, very rapidly. Uh, so I'm going to, and I'm doing all of this with the controller, right? So sure. This is a. Uh, okay, let's pick up the gold. I'm going to skip my turn, and then I'll let my. Uh, I'll cast a. Um, let's say a stunning arrow at him, and that should take care. Uh, no, he still survives. Well, I still have another one, or uh, I don't have another one. So let me just try to. I'll just cast a regular arrow at him. That should be sufficient. There we go. Okay, so that was a very quick introduction to combat. Nice. So there's a lot of extra stuff that was added to the game, and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, head over uh, to uh, David, and we're going to show a little bit of the uh, cooperative play. Okay, so we see that Scarlet uh, has uh, an exclamation mark yep. over her head. I was just going to ask about that. Yeah, uh, and that's because she wants to talk about something, and we see that uh, Roderick also has one. So David, if you can join me. Yep. So nothing's happening. It's not right, reacting. So second player is jumping mm -hmm. in now. Ah, there you go. <coughs> okay. So he's going to join in. Okay. Uh, I still have to create a profile. There All right. Okay. And I automatically got Roderick assigned. So as soon as a uh, second player can jump in at any time, uh, uh, Divinity Original Sin already had online multiplayer on the PC, but for mm. uh, the console version, we added local co-op or couch okay. co-op. So I'm going to move over to the left, David's going to move over to the right, and then we naturally move into split wow. screen. And so basically I can now go off and do my own things elsewhere in the world. David will have to live with the consequences of my action. <laughs> so uh, another thing which is new here uh, is that uh, we see, uh, well, I can't hear it here. I don't know if people on the stream will hear it. Uh, everything has been voice recorded. So I we recorded every single dialogue in the game. And while we were at it, we also revamped all of the dialogue. We made a lot of story modifications. Uh, we uh, changed the entire ending, actually. We added extra depth to the characters. So there's been a lot of story changes, lots of quest enhancements, new quests that have been added. Mm. And uh, it makes for almost a completely new game, actually. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to David, and we're going to have to do something about that exclamation mark. So when you're in split screen, can you each get into separate combat battles? Yeah. Right. So we'll see an example of that in a second. I can also actually uh, access my inventory, do all the things that I would want to do without him being interrupted. So it's really mm. a game where you can play in co-op without ah. uh, actually uh, interacting with the other guy. So I'm going to head over back to him. My eyesight is not so good, so I'm trying to find my I'm the other way. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, there he is. There you so go. if I, I, original sin had this uh, cooperative dialogue system, which you could do cooperative dialogues online, and you could talk to one another, pretty much role playing the fact that you were yeah. uh, playing together. And so that now that's actually the the vision which was behind the game was that we were always going to be doing this thing that we talk to one another in the game while we're sitting next mm -hmm. to each other. So uh, I'm complaining about the fact that David was absent in battle, and so he can uh, give me an answer something. Really? Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't really mean to leave you in the lurch like that. All Next right. time, just shout and I'll come running. Okay. Well, uh, well, then I'll say, oh, I didn't really run into trouble. I don't didn't really need you. We're uh, so friendly to each other. Yeah, we are, actually. We weren't this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, let's head back into town and show you a little bit about the systemics uh, of uh, the game. So, Original Sin, obviously, is a, a very deep and detailed RPG, which features 80 hours of gameplay, and uh, one of the things that uh, made it so popular uh, is the fact that you can pretty much uh, play it like you would play a pen and paper game, except that this time it's on a computer. Mm -hmm. As long as you, you can figure out a way of manipulating the rules, the game will react in a natural fashion. So we're going to go. I just saw, I noticed a cat. Yeah, there a is. Nice little detail, I like that white cat. Well, you can actually talk to this one. Oh He's my actually. Gosh. This game of the year, <laughs> decided. <laughs> This particular cat is actually a battle mage who was polymorphed, <laughs> and so he has <laughs> issues, and he likes to be eating a cat again. Oh but there's gosh. actually a talent which is called Pet Pal, which allows you to talk to cats, and uh, indeed any animal in the game, and you can pick up extra quests this way. So it's definitely one uh, to pick up. It's a very nice one. All right, I'm going to head in, uh, talk to this guy here. We are here for a, uh, a mission, which is to uh, infiltrate a, uh, a sect. We, were we are source hunters. We're looking for people who use the source, which is a, like a form of forbidden magic, mm. and our investigations have led us here. So we're going to try to infiltrate this uh, Immaculate Cult, but except we're not going to follow the story solution, we're going to exploit the mechanics of the game to shortcut some of the questing uh, that can be done in the game. So, okay. And we'll demonstrate this by um, 
splitting up uh, a little bit of my party. So what I'm doing now is I'm disconnecting uh, Wallgraph here. And uh, Wallgraph, I can basically take over control of him and send him anywhere I want in the world. So uh, if I do this, for instance, you see that he's sneaking. He's the barrel now. Now he's a bush right now. So <laughs> he's going to, depending on which uh, environment he's in, he's going to adapt himself. And he will, um, yeah, well, if I go it, if I do it on the wood, he'll become a barrel, for instance. Anyway, I'm going to give control of Wallgraph now to David. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this character to him. Wow. And so as easy as that, you can just basically reconfigure your party. And now David has control of Wallgraph. So I'm going to let him do his thing. I'll just move away, be on my own business. Right. Yeah, so what we're trying to do in Silver Glen is actually uh, infiltrate the Immaculate Cult that has taken over uh, the village here. And the official way that uh, the design team designed this quest is you have to talk to that guy and you have to answer a couple of uh, questions correctly and then you need to do, you need to go to a dungeon and go through a trial. So it's a, a one hour or a two hour quest. But because we have so many skills and systemics in the game, there is actually a very short way of infiltrating the Immaculate Village, which is on the other way of, uh, of the map. Hmm. Um, and that is to go through this hatch. But of course, it's locked. And it's someone else's hatch. And when you interfere with the items of someone else, they go like, hey, don't touch that. Sure. Uh, don't move my stuff around. Don't go into my hatch. So <laughs> I can open it. I also cannot steal his books or, or look into his library. Uh, and I also just, I'm a rogue, and I just can't go around pickpocketing people. To be able to pickpocket, I need to be in sneak mode. Uh, and this is why the designers put those guys there, so that I would not be able to enter sneak mode. So if I try sneaking here, it says sneaking failed, because I'm in the line of sight of these guys. Sure. What they didn't think of is that this altar, it blocks the line of sight. So I can go into sneak mode right here, but of course, as soon as I go from behind that altar, my sneaking fails again. However, there is a skill that I have called invisibility. It's walk in shadows. Mm -hmm. I become invisible. When I am invisible, other people cannot see me. So if I start sneaking now, no one can spot me sneaking. Uh, and now I can pickpocket this guy because you have to be in sneak mode to be able to do that. And I'm going to steal the key to the hatch. And I'm going to stop right there because pickpocketing is based on weight and value of the things. So he mines more. So he's, he's, um, he knows that you're stealing heavy things or, or expensive things. So I'm just going to stop at light items like, um, like a key. So I now entered his hatch successfully. And I can see that there's a waypoint shrine here. And a waypoint shrine can teleport you from, uh, from one side of the map to a complete different side of the map. Now that I'm in this room, one of the things that you immediately do when you enter a new area in an RPG is look around for stuff that you can use, of course. Of course. Um, now, in a Divinity game, everything that's not too heavy or nailed to the ground, you can interact with. So all these things that light up, I can interact with. On a PC, this is very easy because you just move the mouse and you point mm. at the things that you want to uh, interact with. Uh, with a controller, this is a bit more difficult. So we, uh, we have three different ways of interacting with everything. You can look at them. I can also uh, toggle through all the interactive uh, items here, or I can uh, click the left thumbstick and then I have this uh, cursor that I can move around. And then actually my favorite is if you hold the X button, uh, you activate active search, it highlights everything and you get this little inventory where That's you can awesome. immediately, thank you, or yeah. you can immediately interact with everything and you can also from this uh, inventory wow. start reading a note. For instance. And the important thing about the active search is also it actually has a gameplay value. Uh, if you have a high enough perception, you'll find secrets that way also. Mm. So, uh, Is there an encumberment system? Beg your pardon? Is there an encumberment system? Or yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, so because uh, pretty much every single item that you see in the world. Actually, I'm entering a shop over here in the, uh, on the left side of the screen. And uh, any item that you see, you can try to pick it up. Yeah. In this particular case here, if I'm going to pick up items, uh, it's a shop, so she says, are you interested in the item? So she doesn't say that I'm a thief this time because she wants to barter with me. So now I can start bartering with her if I want. And uh, I'm going to say, well, I'm just browsing it. And this all changes their attitude towards me also. So that has an impact also on how I can play. Now, speaking of uh, reactions, I'm going to try to enter her back door here. And she says, you can't enter here. And I says, you know what, I'll go where I please. And uh, she doesn't really agree with that. And so she's going to call for the guards. So the guards are going to arrive, and they will make me a um, proposition. 
which is like uh, either uh, listen to what's going on or uh, if you're unwilling to f uh, listen to our orders, uh, you'll go to jail. And actually, I'm going to let myself be thrown in jail because what that does is it allows me to go to that place David is looking for, the sacred stone. It's very convenient. And this was discovered by one of our players uh, on our forums that he said, like, you know, the quickest way to do this thing, which takes about six hours, <laughs> is like just get yourself thrown in jail and then organize your jailbreak. All right. So th my problem that I have right now is that I need to uh, get all of my stuff, my gear, which is in these chests over here. And obviously, I need to uh, get through that lock. So uh, I'm going to need a little bit of David's help, but he's on my his way towards Sacred Stone, so hopefully he's going to get me out of there. In the meantime, I'm just going to lie down over here and have a sleep. If, and I'll if there weren't a second player, how would you how would you escape? Beg pardon? If you didn't have a second, if you were playing by yourself, how would oh you, you escape? Oh, you control the, the enter entire party, so you can switch off ah, the party, okay. you can split gotcha. them up. So yeah, like right now, I'm again on the other side of the world. And I'm with a uh, bear daughter here, so she can uh, actually do the legit way and like try to quest and stuff like that. So she could, I could be lying there for five hours if sure. we didn't figure out other ways. But we have better ways than that to get out of jail. Actually, if I go back to my original character, what I could do is I could. Uh, there's always a fallback sol uh, solution in Original Sin. It's like a part of the core design me methodology. And so if I talk to this here, this is a uh, a prison demon, and that's like a very expensive way of getting out of it. So uh, if I talk to this guy, he's going to make an offer to me, and he's going to say, you know what? I can get you out of here, all right? Let's make a deal. And so I'll quickly cl uh, click through the dialogue. And so he says, well, the deal is you're mm. going to give something of your primary stats. Now, there's no way I'm going to do that. Uh, so I'll say, you know what? I'll just go back on my bed, and I'll think of something else. Now, if only I would have a teleportation skill or something that can help me. As a matter of fact, there's a teleporter pyramid, which is in my gear here, and uh, teleporter pyramids are things, it's like a mark and recall system, you can teleport mm -hmm. from one place to the other. So David made it to jail by now, so hopefully he's going to be able to help me out here. Is the max number of people eight that you can have total in your party? Uh, four. So yeah. But four each of you? Or just four no, total? No, 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 okay. the, the total party, so because you play together, okay. is four, and then you can also have summons, uh, each party, so basically you can have eight actually, because each party member is allowed one summon. Right. Uh, and that's something that you will definitely use in the bigger battles. So David is invisible now, and he's trying to figure out where my gear is. <laughs> I have no idea. It's right. in one of these chests, right? Right. Yeah, so we're now going to... Uh, Can you... Uh, well, never mind. We're going to try to uh, break you out of jail, but then I first need the key. Most, of, most of the time, this doesn't really end well, right? No. You know what? I'm like sick and tired of waiting here in jail for you, so I'm going to use one of my master skills on these guys here, and then hopefully, that's oh sorry, there's <laughs> a bit of <laughs> there's a bit of friendly fire there. So uh, <laughs> all right, uh, okay. Well, we're in in the war zone now, so I hope you have that key. Do you have it? Uh, you killed me. Yeah, I think I, I, did? I don't. <laughs> I don't think you survived the rain of fire. All right, well, <laughs> killed your friend. <laughs> I think uh, you, sh you deserve to stay in jail. I think. Yeah, <laughs> you're so a monster. The adventure is not over, though, because I can still go. So you could use yeah. your teleporter pyramid and uh, teleport over there to revive yourself. So if you, you use your... Uh, so he has a uh, resurrection mm. scroll, so that one he can use. I think you have the teleporter pyramid. Yeah, there it is. No, I'm teleporting to myself, so I don't know oh who... Oh, you have both of them, all right. Yeah, I probably have both of well, them. Well, I mean, our adventure would take us very, very, very long, <laughs> but it should at least give you an idea of some of the options that you have in the game. There's yeah. really a lot uh, that, that you can yeah. do. The game looks super impressive. Uh, I think it's awesome that uh, console gamers are going to get a chance to experience. Yeah, it's, it's the first time you have a game like this on a console, actually. We've yeah. been looking for any other game that, that did something like this, like, you know, a deep RPG with turn-based combat, like yeah. cla typical classic RPG, but mod modern production values, and with split screen, you know, that's yeah. uh, because that's really the charm about being able to play. So Now I'm super excited for it. Can't wait to play on console. Uh, does it have a release date yet? Yeah, uh, it's uh, well. It's, cur it's currently scheduled for the end of October. Okay, uh, might be that's a little bit later, but it looks like we're going to make it. Cool, I can't wait, gentlemen. Thank you so All much for coming right, by and showing off for the game. Us. Uh, that's Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition. Stay tuned. Still more games to show you here from E3 at IGN.